Um, so what I'm going to do is tell you about something first, and then I'm going to tell you why we, we are doing this. Okay? Kind of backwards, but there it is. Um, so this is um, over in the corner is Gunther Verhaven, Russ, um, Antwerp, and uh, myself, Boston. Um, so first, I just wanted to get something um, out. Um, agility, um, what is it? It's um, not scrum, right? And, and you don't do it, so you don't do agile, right? That's, that'd be strange. Um, you can't do a verb. So agility um, is, is, let's see, um, an enterprise's ability to take advantage of opportunities respond to challenges, um, and, and to do so while controlling risk. So um, in, in our world today, with all the changes and, and things going on, um, certainly very, very important. And the other thing that's part of it is just another rephrase is to be quick or nimble. So Scrum is an enabler of agility. Oh, oh, oh. Tim, can I I'm a really important manager. <coughs> I'm at a tie. So I'm the really important manager of a really important big company. Oh. And we are agile because we do scrum. So I'm sort of surprised by what you're saying. We are agile, right? We do scrum. There are many companies that do scrum that have not improved their ability to compete at all. That is, you can do scrum and it doesn't change the business at all. You can build software quicker, you can build, you know, all that, and doesn't mean. Okay, so let, let me tell you about a couple of the problems that I have. So being a big important manager, by, by the way, if you're willing to confirm that, I can get you a bonus. <laughs> Maybe I should apologize to the audience too. This is an orange star. We used to love speaking Amsterdam. <laughs> in the Netherlands, it, it, it was too late to rip off a German flag. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm a big important manager, big important company, and uh, we are doing Scrum. And I am somewhat disappointed, I must say. I was told by coaches and so on, you should do Scrum. Scrum is fun. Scrum is great. Scrum is going to save your life. It will make you a better person. <laughs> Lots of money. Ah, well. well. And I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm a manager. I have to manage my company. I have to take care of my company. And now, since we do Scrum, I can't do anything anymore. I can go to the team, they smash the door in my face. <laughs> and they all say, Papa, you're a chicken. <laughs> I have no idea what they talk about. I can't intervene. I only get to go to that one meeting called Spring Spring. They were really whatever, something like that. They, they, they refuse to fill in my timesheets. They don't report anymore. All that I used to do, and I had control of my company, and it's gone. So Scrum is not fun at all. But you've become more profitable, your company, hasn't it? I would have to check with the accountant. Okay. <laughs> so you haven't noticed any big difference? Other than, well, uh, other than you can't get into... I see all those smiling faces. I don't have a smiling face. <laughs> hmm. So I'm sort of... I'm, 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 you know, all that scrum stuff, I'm a man, I'm lost. Okay, so really lost. hold on just a minute. We'll see if... Not if we can help you, but if we can at least enlighten you. Oh. Okay? Okay, that would be great. So I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, forget scrum. 20% of all the organizations that were interviewed by a company called Forrester, a market co uh, um, research company, said that they were 100% agile. Yeah, that's me. Completely agile. Yeah, Great. Yeah, Wonderful. Um, and uh, of those, about 70% were companies that sold software products. The others were IT type companies. Um, only 25%, uh, only 40% said, um, it was under 25% of agility, whatever that is. It's okay? So you're, you're up at the top. That's good. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, so, so this is just a, a thought that we, we are noticing that many, many organizations are so desperate to be agile that they'll say they're agile without any proof. 
you know, they want to compete, they want to stay on top of things like um, seawater rising and nuclear power plants going out of business, and you know, they want to, they have to respond to this. Um, Scrum is a foundation of agility. If you can quickly build high value things every week, two weeks, month, whatever, um, there's a possibility of using that for competitive advantage, but only if the business does so, okay? Um, so uh, this is good because agility can be gained by organizations progressively by refocusing their business functions to take advantage of that neat capability that most of you have been giving them without them knowing it. I'm, 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 you again? I'm trying to get this. Yeah, yeah, good. So we're doing scrum. Yeah. That's not, so we're not agile. You it's, said you were 100% agile. It's starting to sink in a bit. Okay. But we do Scrum, and you're saying that this is a great basis to, to build a be, To be agile, yeah. Okay, if we can sort of refocus, reorganize a number of business functions in the company so that we can get more benefit out yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you mean with agility, you know, agility at a sort of enterprise level, sort of the outside of my organization, the way I work with the market and customers and so on? Certainly. You would, you would certainly work differently with your customers if you could deliver value in different ways to them. You would certainly market things differently. You might even set up customer support differently. Um, this, this opens up a lot of both opportunity but also challenge because changing organizations that are used to being plan driven to being opportunistic and agile is very difficult. I'm starting to see that because we still have a lot of work to do in our organization to make sure that, let's say, on the outside of our organization, we are agile, we, are, we achieve mm -hmm. some sort of... Actually, you are the same as you were before. One, one of the things you might just ponder is many organizations that are using Scrum report that they have a 50% increase in productivity, and yet they still have the same number of developers. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so just a, a short just question for everyone here. Um, would you raise your hand if you are in an Agile organization? <laughs> Have you frightened people? No. Would you raise your hand if you're becoming Agile? Good. And reaching if you've been told to be agile, and I'm going to start pretty soon. <laughs> hmm. A lot of people seem to recognize this, but nobody wants to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what if agile is not in your immediate horizon? Agile is a fad. It's, it will go away again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Um, actually, let me ask a question. How do you know? Or not. How do you know if you're becoming agile? How do you know? Who can tell? I know when I'm following agile values. Okay, so we're following agile values. Yeah, I try to live them. It's good. Does in your company is it following agile values? Yeah, the company I'm currently working with is following agile values. Is it more than five people? <laughs> <laughs> Between 400 and 500 people. Excellent. Um, I want your autograph later. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am so pleased to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to show this because it's pretty hard. Thank you. Welcome. It's a rugby ball, not a football, so that's good to know. Um, so this comes from The Economist, uh, a financial type magazine, pretty well reputed. Um, volatility is likely to remain constant. Um, it will continue to royal business and operating models for some time to come. Um, second thing is, to become competitive, companies must respond quickly and nimbly, oh, if words sound familiar, um, to the changing environment. Their ability to respond to market movements is core to sustainability. Interesting. And then this was taken further, 40% of those companies that were um, interviewed, and this was at the, 
what they call it, sea level like you. 40% um, said it is a core differentiator force. This is extremely important, whatever it is. 48% um, said it's somewhat important. It contributes to our success. And the others were, huh? You know, but. Oh, little service. For whose organization would you think that enterprise agility, organizational agility, is extremely important, even maybe crucial to survive? For who's that? Given changing market circumstances, the volatility of the world, and things we can't control. Just one possibility, global warming. You can need more air conditioning in Karlsruhe. <laughs> <laughs> Which is going to put stress on the power supply. Who's in the second category? Who thinks it's, well, not really crucial, but we could use some organizational agility? It's good. Okay, so um, this is, goes back to the other one. How do you know if your organization is becoming more agile? So, for instance, how much money has been invested so far in agility in your company per person? How many of you would say less than $1,000? Um, less than between one and $10,000? Dollars, dollars are like, kind of like euros, but smaller. Um, between 10,000 and 100,000? Between um, greater than 100,000? How many don't know? So that's sort of strange, no? A uh, lot of companies say that agility, organizational agility, is, is even crucial, at least very important. We spend a lot of money on it. Training, facilities, infrastructure, new tooling, development stuff. Consulting. Reorganizing uh, fancy consultants, yeah. uh, asking lots of money, coaches and so on. So we spend a lot of money on it, but we don't really know how much. How can we then know what's the return of this investment? Yeah, how many of you know what the return on that, on the investment in your company, if you have an idea of how much money has been spent? How many of you understand what the return on that investment's been? <laughs> that should deeply trouble at least the financial officer and perhaps the rest of management. We're, we're spending a lot of money. What are we getting from it? Or is this another one of those software fads, right, that, you know, we keep spewing money on. Um, and, and with that, has your organization's agility gone up, down, stayed the same, or you don't know? And remember, agility being flexibility, being quick, nimble, working together, collaborative, um, giving and, your high responsiveness to the market, and so being, able to, demand, uh, being able to get more value from it, yeah. from your company. So, organizational agility has been changing over the last 12 months. Has it been going up? Maybe even down? No. You were bought by Oracle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, around this area, it's SAP that buys all of the companies. Ah, right. It's the United States, it's Oracle. <laughs> So um, just a question, what's your approach in your company to becoming agile? I mean, you guys are doing your part. You're laying the foundation for agility. Um, just a question, um, what's your approach been for becoming agile? Prayer? There's a, a rugby ball in it for someone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so that creates more productivity, probably higher quality, and, and certainly um, lower price for the value that you're for the value you can derive from the software. So you're doing your job. That's good. Shall I try to, shall no, practice no, <laughs> no. Okay. I threw a deck of index cards to someone once and <laughs> rest in peace. So, so I just want to show you something that, that is suggestive. We've been working on this a while. And, and the reason we've been working on this is not because, well, whatever. 
the reason we're working on this is um, many, many presentations, people say, hey, how do I sell Scrum to management? And Jeff Sutherland and I wrote a book saying, hey, you know, guys, did you know that your development organization can, you, can at least, or many can build software in at least 30 days? And this is something you can take advantage of, and here's how you can take advantage of it. Um, I think it sold four copies, whatever. And, and so the idea is that our biggest issue is managers don't know what their role is if their development organization can build software of higher value more rapidly than that. They, they, they look at it and say, uh, so what do I do? I mean, you just told me I can't go into the room. I can't um, give you a date and tell you what to do. So, so what do I do? Because I'm not about to become unemployed. So, so it's, it's probably the biggest issue um, facing the future of Scrum is if companies don't learn how to take advantage of the capability you're giving them, they're not going to value it, and they're not going to keep um, supporting and furthering it. Still, Scrum has never said that management is useless. Never. Never said. Scrum we, has never said that, that we should label people as impediments so we can remove them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've been hearing that a lot. It's a way to, let's say, reorganize. We, we, with Scrum, we've succeeded in sort of reorganizing the way that software development has been, been done. Maybe we should reorganize the way that management works. Instead of going down to the workflow as soon as there's a problem, that's a crisis. I'm, I'm great at crisis fighting, right? So I go down to the floor and I demand from people, why did you t take 10 hours? You estimated that at 5 hours. That's crucial for the survival of the company, right? So, so maybe if they learned to think, um, to take advantage of this, if they learned to maybe have different values, if they learned that um, like a key job to a manager is to, they may have people working for them. Their job is to get as much value from those people as possible. And um, wow, if they don't know how to, they're not doing their job. And so what we're looking for is what we've always said to, to management is your job suddenly changes from telling people what to do to instead doing everything you can do to help them produce more value. And they're like, oh, okay. Hmm. So we're trying a, a bit of a different approach. To date, um, a lot of organizations are very successful with Scrum bottom-up. That's like XP, it's a tradition. Um, they have projects, they may even have whole products that are being done this way, they may have some work that's being done. Sometimes it's even spread throughout the entire product development organization. Um, and that's good, all for that. Um, however, what we're suggesting is that to gain agility, the first thing that management needs to do is start measuring the investment they're making in it, and learning or figuring out what benefits they can get from it. That is, if they don't do that, whoa, that's a default on the key management job of managing the investment of the organization. And if they don't know how to do that, I wonder why they're nervous. So the intent of this is to give them an approach um, to doing their job to manage, to optimize their investment, and to create agility within the organization. So it's about knowing what's going on, so we can take informed decisions, not hypothetical decisions, fantasy yeah. decisions, right. dream decisions, right. but decisions based upon reality. I thought the job of management was to measure and optimize. It's good. Um, for instance, um, I, would, I would expect them to have metrics. Um, not low-level metrics, but metrics which shake the organization, change its abilities, like metrics on, whoa, employee satisfaction. That should go up if we're using Scrum, except for the managers. Um, customer satisfaction, customers on current release, time to get a small change to a customer, um, number of customers, stabilization time um, to a release, 
um, frequency of releases, all these things are things that um, we, we think are important that should be measured because they sh would show not the ultimate benefit, but they would show improvements in things that you can benefit from. And we think that management does rightfully need and asks for metrics. But let's give them proper metrics instead of trying to judge teams, individual teams, and think that velocity is some sort of new name for productivity. Yeah. These are management metrics. What is the health? What is the health of my company, of my department, of my product that we're building? So I can assess health at that level and then maybe <coughs> step back on saying, hey, how are we doing? How can I facilitate the scrum teams more and better so that our metrics improve? Instead of judging and assessing and evaluating people and that doesn't really help. And as I invest money, I should see some of these things get better. One does hope. Um, there was a question over there. What's the matrix for the management? Oh, how do you measure the management? The management itself. Oh, the management. <laughs> the management role, accountability, is to have those metrics and look for ways to improve them. So the metrics in themselves, the state of the metrics, the state of the company, is the assessment of the management. So if the manager, for instance, doesn't understand that they're there to help the developers in any way possible and instead keeps interfering, they're going to start seeing these metrics get worse. So it's feedback on their ability to get value from the development organization. Now this is, um, for those of you who understand this, are suboptimal metrics. Is these are all about how the development organization is functioning and its impact on customers and, and on employees. Um, well, two metrics that are missing from here, a couple of metrics that are missing from here, are um, one we saw at SAP, which is for the revenues, what are the revenues for each per employee? Um, if you are becoming more efficient and you are being able to produce products that are more valuable, you should see an increase in revenues per employee. You should become leaner. The organization can become leaner. Yeah. If you start installing the right practices, you will become leaner. And as we from Scrum strongly believe in transparency, there's transparency of the metrics. Yeah. That's a way to help your management assess themselves. Oh, you have metrics that we're totally accountable for and they're transparently available. Now, if that weren't improving, if the revenues per employee weren't improving, I would start thinking, hmm, maybe my sales organization doesn't know how to take advantage of this. Maybe um, as the way we're defining our products, we could change it so that we actually can get more money out of it. This is um, not a direct one-to-one -one relationship to the product the development organization. It's a symptom of either using um, the capabilities that come out of Scrum, or not. So we're using metrics as indicators, not as an objective. These are not targets. This is an indicator of a situation so that you can go out and explore what's going on, find out why and how. And it's never simple. What's, so what's the other one? One lesser metrics may lead to a number of symptoms and problems that are arising. The other one, the other organizational one. And we like to not focus on one single metrics, that's why we represent them on a radar chart. It's a collection of metrics, and it's not even a collection of metrics, it's the evolution of the collection. So it yeah. seems to be improving on a number of uh, axes. So we have two types. Um, one is down, we call them fundamental metrics, how well we're doing with product development. The other are more organizational metrics, um, which should reflect the impact of that on the organization, and that would be customer satisfaction, that would be employee satisfaction, that would be the um, revenues you get per employee, and a couple of others that I might have remembered at 9 o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> a little later. So these are, are really important, and from them, you can weigh them in various ways, and you can actually calculate um, a, a simple thing called an, an index. There's a request for a rugby ball over here. Yeah. No, no, not really. Don't you think that uh, requesting uh, more revenue per employee is a dangerous metric because uh, 
Some managers may understand it for reducing the number of employees. Yes. So what would happen to employee satisfaction? Yeah. Well. With, uh, you know what? Many, many managers uh, love picking metrics. Yep. Just the ones they, they, they want to have. Yep. Well, the, the funny thing that will uh, appear if you use a radar graph, if they focus on one metric and don't do anything about the others, they will all be low. Or they will, you can't hide each radar graph. They will all be there. We tried to balance these so um, t for two things. One, so if you try um, something that's dysfunctional, it'll impact the other metrics. Um, and also we tried to establish them against something else so we can spot gaming, people faking the metrics. Not that someone would. Now something interesting about this would be um, that you could even watch just, you know, like if I'm a CEO and I don't have time for the real nitty gritty, you could just, as you invested a million dollars in agility, you could see if this improved. Um, so what we're looking at then is an ability to increase uh, an organization's agility. And one of the ways we're measuring that are these metrics. So that's an interesting way of doing it. And, and um, what we're doing to change those metrics is if you um, take an organization that's using Scrum, um, not a lot's going to change month by month by month. Employee satisfaction might be better, but the organization's still no, not necessarily any more competitive than it was before. Still not necessarily driving more value from the marketplace. So what we're doing is, is we're setting up a, um, what do we call that, an agility improvement organization or a small group of like five or six people. Those of you that have read my, my latest book with Jeff Sutherland, Software in 30 Days or Enterprise and Scrum before that, recognize it, it's in there. Right. So, because what, what we observe, as probably many of you will observe, that there's a lot of enthusiasm over Scrum, let's say on the workflow. I, I call it sort of bottom-up enthusiasm. People are really happy, they love to do this, they get accountability yeah. again. But, as we've learned from John Cotter, who knows John Cotter? So, the, the change expert, Bruno, eight, eight steps and, and so on. He says, well, um, it's our assertion that Agile and agility are more about mindset and cultural change and, and, and behavior than it's only about, let's say, a new IT process. So cultural change will only succeed if you attach a sort of top-down layer to the bottom-up enthusiasm. Bottom-up in itself is not enough. Only top-down won't work. Agility can't be dictated. You can't oppress people into, and you will be Agile, you will be Scrum. Oh yeah, they will be really motivated. So we have to connect those, bottom up, top down, connect them together. And we think, our third assertion, by uh, reorganizing a number of business functions, not only the scrum process, not only development, but much more, that we can have enterprise agility. And we've created sort of five angles to have a look at them. So there is the process, so your product development process. By the way, is it a surprise if you think that scrum would be a great short? Well, let me, let me take this for just a minute, okay? Um, Scrum is used for complex work to create something of the highest value in a complex situation. Organizational change is way up there in terms of complexity. So we thought we would use Scrum for organizational change. And we have a team of people in the company that want to and are accountable for creating um, more agility, and we put them into a scrum monthly cycle. And what we provide them with, um, certainly can change with every organization, is a whole set of practices that they can progressively use for continuous improvement. So every sprint, probably chokes when they say that, um, they make improvements, changes to the organization that make it more agile. So we're using agility teams to um, implement change in the organization upon sort of the five domains from a practice backlog. And um, we use yeah. Scrum to manage the change process. We're not saying that the complete organization needs to run on Scrum. We're using Scrum to manage the complexity of the change process. Yes. Um, when you're trying to um, push Scrum in the whole organization, aren't you forgetting that um, 
unlike developers, um, management are often a different type of person. They chose management, they chose sales because they didn't want to write down. They didn't really like to do the reflective, where did, where did I go wrong? Because it's also um, increasing their, their self-confidence and so forth. And yet sales is an empirical process run monthly like Scrum. We are not using Scrum in the rest of the organization. We're using it for the change process only. Okay. Pass this back. Um, so every sprint, they take what they think might be the most valuable improvements that will create more agility possible. Um, they work and try to help the organization change and use them, adopt them. Um, and, and then at the end of the sprint, they measure. Now, measurement trails change by months. So changing the ratio of employees and sales probably is a, a 6 to 12 month lagging indicator. But we, we keep measuring and watch for improvement. So at the end of every month, they look and see what's happened, how things have changed, what um, success factors they've had. And they then figure out what are the next best things to go after. Now, one of the things that they're asked for right at the very, stop, very start is you know, lay out a vision of where they're going and communicate it fully with everyone and make sure this is communicated broadly. Um, a way you can detect that that didn't take is if you hear rumblings and rumors and things like that. That means communication isn't happening. So there are a number of anti-patterns ways of spotting whether the practices took. And so we actually track by the different areas um, which practices they're saying are in place. And we only have three criteria. One is not being used. It's being used somewhat or should be fully in place. And we track it in five areas, um, which are not new management areas. They're just areas where practices are put. One is productivity. The other is quality. Now, quality is a little different than this. What we're talking about with quality is, is there a quality development environment being used by the scrum teams that will generate high quality software increments. So it's not testing products, that's the scrum teams. It's setting up the environment for it, which up till now we've begged for and pleaded for and you know, it doesn't happen. So it's not about QA, the activity, it's about providing teams with guidelines on what is quality in our organization so that they can take that into account and in their domain live up to it and build high quality. Wow, software. like definition of done. Oh yeah, my God. Fitness for purpose, yeah. Another might be value. You know, this is the product management organization. Are we building valuable products or not? Um, are we trying to not do low value requirements, et cetera? Um, enterprise is the top level. It's the roll up of all this. And process is this mm, scrum masters who in some organizations, there are a lot of practices that they don't actually make happen. And so this is, you know, checking and implementing and continuing to improve that. Now, this is an interesting one because it's saying we're not only going to look at improvements in um, the practices being used in different ways in the organization, we're also going to look at the corollary, which is what has happened to the related metrics. Now, this is where you start seeing gaming. Hmm, we've put a lot of money into communications. We've put all the um, developers into open spaces, they're collaborative, we stopped offshoring, and yet employee satisfaction has plummeted. Hmm, what's going on? Or we haven't put any money at all into quality, and yet they're reporting fewer and fewer defects. What? So um, there should be a relationship, and if not, um, it's certainly worth investigating. So, Every sprint that these um, teams that try to improve the agility of the organization do, they also evaluate how well the prior practices are sticking. Because my goodness, as you all know, you make a change and it's a new way of doing work, it doesn't often stick. So you've got to keep going back and back and back and eventually, you know, the, the values of Scrum and things like that start being adopted and, and it becomes progressively better. But it's not a sure thing. 
hey, I changed the organization. Did it stick? I don't know. And on the other hand, uh, we should also be a bit careful because it might take some time before practices stick. It's not like we do them in this print and the next print we see the metrics improve. So be careful in being like sort of over-responsive, over-reactive and stuff. Yeah. And this is what we call agility path. Um, it is, consists of two things that will be, just like Scrum, open to anyone. The first is Agility Scrum. So it's Scrum modified a little so that it can be used by people trying to make change in the organization. Sound good? Sounds yeah, good. And it'll be publicly available as the Scrum Guide is publicly available. Yeah. Oh, so with, of which there's going to be a new release in about 25 days, right? A couple of months, by the end of the month, there will be a new release of the Scrum Guide. And the other thing that um, come, is, is available is um, the steps for making this happen within an organization. Um, so both of those will be available. There's a lot of some other stuff um, that is more proprietary that we're kind of holding back. But we intend for this to be, um, the idea is to be widely out there so anyone can use it and can come to managers and ask these questions and say, this is something you ought to be doing. Because- And give managers like me back a role. Yeah. Managing, measuring, and facilitating the enterprise. Your question might be, So who is the person responsible for making sure that we ship quality products? Uh, we need to assign someone. It's certainly not the manager of QA, um, because that ties together architecture, infrastructure, um, build systems, um, um, infra uh, frameworks, all those things. So someone who, who has all that. Now, amazing thing there is if the person's dumb and builds them and then just throws them at scrum teams, guess what's going to happen to all the metrics? So this requires that they carefully help people understand them, training, and actually even work in the teams showing them how to do it. Otherwise, their metrics go down, down tubes. No. Well, they, we track them. They're related, but not one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a one-to-many of a metric to a, things that could affect it, because there's so many ripple effects that you can get. So there will be a uh, product owner and agility team. Product owner selecting practices from the practice backlog for his or his domain, looking for the highest value, the, the, the biggest wins, the biggest gains to be made. So that's product owner role. But the product owner in the agility team will have a change team, sort of implementing the change, delivering increments of change. <laughs> and an increment of change is not, not like a software product, it's a change business function. Another way uh, that the department works in, procedures that have been changed, so that the organization becomes more and more optimized. So increments of change will be produced by an agility team, and it's sort of yes. slightly modified organization. If I want to change my organization, it's already quite a complex task. If I want to introduce Scrum at the same time to do that task, it's like for me doubling the complexity or doubling the challenge. And Again, we're not using... Do, how, how do I start? Where do I start? Can we're not using myself? Scrum within the organization. We're using it just in the change team. In the change team? Yeah. So we'll, we'll train them, help them understand it. My question is, can I do it myself or will I fail without external support? Um, do you know Scrum? probably do it yourself. You can come up with a list of the things that are most important, uh, of which I suggest communication. There are good books out there on it. John Cotter's is one. But the things that are really important to put in, like how about an automated build system? You know, these things, and, and you're going to order them so that you know which things to do at time, and then you'll watch and see what the impact is. This is, um, the, we've done this for a couple reasons. One. Um, we have some presence in the marketplace. So us saying that this is a good idea 
is better than you just saying, hey, I just woke up in the morning and over coffee, you know, this is what we should do. So it's an attempt to give you some weight behind you working with your organization to do it. Um, the two things that really made this imperative to us were, one, just this fear that there's going to be a huge backlash if management doesn't know how to make agility happen and company problems and failures, perhaps. Um, the other was, I don't know if you remember, but when we wrote the Agile Manifesto, um, aside from us thinking we had a better way of building software, we really wanted to drive a stake through the heart of Waterfall, and we want to stop Rupp from being seen as a successor. Because Rupp is a buy this whole thing, stick it in, and you're, you know, got the baseline for, for Rupp. So the other reason we um, did this very, as, as we, in the time we did, is we saw something called SAFE, um, the successor to Rupp, being, being viewed by many as something you could buy for a lot of money like Rupp, stick it on, and then you're agile. One size fits all. A methodology with lots, lots, lots of prescriptions. And we think we can do better with by offering a framework upon which you can discover for yourself yeah. what your organization should look like. We can't predict how your organization should look like in two or three years. With this framework, you can discover that, and you can use your common sense to find out your intelligence. For a lot of people, um, this is going to be significantly, matter of fact, free, right? Do it yourself, just like Scrum. Um, we're also training people who are skilled more at change, at change management, who you may engage to help you start, um, but they're not needed any more than you need a, um, someone from outside to be a, a outside scrum master. Um, so when we showed before those two statistics of how critical agility was for an organization, 40% got to do it, 48%, yeah. um, we think the 48% will be more than satisfied with, with safe. Um, we think the 40% will try it and go, we it didn't help, and will realize that just like Scrum, the only way you can change, become better, is hard work by the people in the organization. Um, and, and for our, our one slogan for today, not that we're sarcastic because we're good people, but it is unsafe at any speed. This is what Ralph Nader called the early Volkswagens. Any, <coughs> any questions? Yes? What, what exactly are you asking people now to do? Because when we started uh, asking them, you must do Scrum, they failed as you introduced the, the session. Uh, and we asked them, so be more agile. And that's not the message. We don't so ask them anything. We say that if you feel the urgency of becoming more agile, of achieving enterprise agility, mm -hmm. hey, we might have something that can help you. You leave an article from the from um, the Economist that says markets changing. Do you feel like you're able to compete effectively on it? Do you feel like the competition is going by you? Um, if so, and and you're struggling with how to cope with that, here's something a thought a, a bunch of thoughts about how you could do that. And so, literally, management can do this. I would certainly include someone from your organization who knows Scrum to help them. Um, this is something new. Um, but this would be a progress, we call it continuous improvement because this is something that's going to go on for the rest of the company's life. They're going to continue addressing new things that are happening in the marketplace, the world, and their workforce. So this is sort of a change process that should bring you into a state in which you can handle constant change. Continuously improve, continuously adapt to new needs, new markets, and so on. Changes here to stay. Yeah. What are your experiences in the companies where you have tried it out? <laughs> oh, there's a couple of companies running on um, our, our best example is Parametric Technology Corporation. Um, any, any of you drive Mercedes? Volvos? Um, all of the safety equipment in them is built by Continental 
Conti, um, so the subsystems, and that was driven through software product line management from Parametric Technology Corporation. So um, it was used to build Airbuses, um, safety equipment, so pretty significant user of it. I'm, I'm still struggling a little bit with the role of the product owner in an enterprise scrum. Could you give some examples? Who would be fulfilling that role? The highest person in the organization Sorry. who's willing to step forward. Okay. So a key thing with this is we give them no, just like scrum, no authority. Mm -hmm. But they're accountable for increasing the agility. So the organization says, we need to increase agility. So they come and say, we think we need to make these changes. And the person goes, get out of here. They have no authority to say, I'm coming in anyway. Instead, it's an organizational mandate to become more agile. So instead, there's an organizational conversation about, you with this company or not with this company? Okay. It's like a product on a scrub team. The best placed person to know the product, in this case, is now we're not fussy, we'll take a director, even a manager, anyone who wants to make below them more agile or has the accountability for making a section of the company more agile. Not fussy. Okay. No. Sure. There, there can be more than one, but they all have to, just like when you're building a product, they all have to report to one roll-up. Otherwise, you're going to have conflicting things going on. So, so do they share the same practice backlog? Or? Same, we, have, we have same practice backlog, which is like a product backlog. Each d goes after different areas. Now, we have a practice backlog that is in pretty good shape and really addresses some areas, but we fully expect that you're going to change it completely because it is generic, not specific to any one company. Yes? Just a suggestion. It's sort of what we call good practices. You're turning into best practices by tuning them to your context. Who just asked that question? Um, we are using a bottom-up approach in our company, and we have low-level management buy-in, but uh, not yet the top-level management. Uh, according to your experience, uh, which metrics would help us the most? Uh, um, this, this, don't, don't even bother using metrics. This has to be by management higher in the company saying it's very important for us competitively to be more competitive, more market-driven, more agile. Um, if they aren't interested in that, anyone else have a job that he could apply for? Because <laughs> <laughs> the company's in deep trouble. The, the most uh, important metric would be euros, of course, but... Uh, be what? Uh, the money. Uh, yeah. Return. Uh, Return on investment, profitability, net revenue, all those things should go up as you take advantage of opportunities and fend off challenges. Yes, but uh, since we are using What's, what was that? Yes, but. <laughs> <laughs> we are using bottom up. We are starting with one team and we cannot uh, prove uh, that the revenues has gone up. This is a completely different discussion. This is you leaving a magazine or John Cotter book or whatever on the one executive's desk and saying, you know, if we aren't more flexible, our, com our, customer, our competitors are. We are in trouble if we don't start knowing how we stack up. So if you have management that cares about their competitiveness and views agility, like that poll shows, as important, you have a good person to talk to not even talk to, but to start showing that there's an opportunity to take advantage of what you're doing at the bottom. Yes? So how do you make sure that uh, from the management perspective, it's not only viewed as um, it's coming
coming up from the development as their toy, and now we have to use it uh, in upper management. You, don't, you can't make sure of anything, right? <laughs> you can talk to people. You can, um, what we're going to start, there's an article being published or a paper being published by Forrester. Next will be Gartner, then IDC. This is going to be more and more in the press, and it's something that they should be um, attaching themselves to. In fact, the more you say, oh, yeah, of course we knew that. We just were waiting for you to ask. Yes? Uh, enterprise utility sounds like it could be interesting for a lot of different companies that only have common that they have complex problems and a frequently changing market. Um, is there something that makes it easier or even more difficult for software companies? Or is there, can I, I apply it in any way? In I think a product, software product company um, would be much more serious about this because that is the only game in town for them. Uh, if they aren't agile in their marketplace with their software, oh. it's not like they are also selling refrigerators. That's it. Except for Oracle. Most appropriate for companies that, in a way, depend for their survival on a number of software, software products. Internal on the market. So it's more appropriate, but in general, the principle, the ideas could be applied to any type of company. May I ask you another different question? Uh, one sentence was. Uh, you, will, you will get only one ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one aspect of that, that uh, to introduce Scrum, you should come with HR Enterprise from the Bottom, uh, from the top and with Scrum from the bottom. Yeah. If you are now in a, in a different company that does not deal with software, what do you use from the bottom? IT. Almost all companies use software to make their business functions more effective, like their sales organization, their customer support organization. Um, so they're using software in the business units to gain competitive advantage, or at least to stay even. Um, they care or they don't. Now, just a warning. <laughs> Back in 1991, and then even in 2003, I had no idea that Scrum would really take off and be very effective. I believed it did, but you know, one person. We have no idea whether people will see the benefits and advantage of this, and it'll be widely or even um, used very much. We believe it's tremendously effective and solves the problem that's out there. Don't know. Well, we think it's the right thing to do. Yep. But it takes off or not. But it lives up to the principles and values that we believe in. That are much in line with agile values, yeah. you know, the scrum values. And we think we can improve our organizations. Yes. Uh, what are you doing if some managers say, oh, no, we don't? like this stuff, and some others want this, and so, and so you have this conflict inside. So you could either go to the ones who like it and work with them, or you could push it up a couple levels and say, because this, this is not about preference, this is about are you interested in the competitiveness of your company? What's your recommendation for the prior yeah. It's up to the protocol. The protocol, they do it uh, the project owner will obviously work with the full agility team, hopefully. There's lots of people probably influencing the product owner to do marketing first. <laughs> you can actually have an agility improvement team for each one of those areas. Or you can even have many of them for multiple players. Just, just like with product backlog, though, the trick is that they don't trip over each other. So there's some traceability. Who asked that? You. you. Um, back there on um, the hand attached to the pen that's in the air. Morpheus. Yes. Right, so uh, currently Agility Path is in English. Are you planning, what's the next language? Is it going to be Zulu or Swahili or French? What are they talking, Ghana? Sorry? What's the language of Ghana? I can't. 
So actually, we're only interested in, in helping the um, people who speak English. <laughs> Give them a head start, right? That was a bad comment. Don't quote that, whatever. <laughs> we, 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 we have so many things that are ahead in our product backlog for this that that's translations lagging. Someone else may translate it for us. It's open source. You know what? Go to it. So, like this current guide, it's been translated in a number of languages by people on communities worldwide. We'll be publishing the agility guide as a scrum guide openly and look for people that are willing to translate that into whatever other languages you can Yeah, I think that's a lot of thought. Huh? I have the last thought. I'll say, I think we really have some abused our time box. <laughs> I just asked some people over there and said, oh, go on, it's interesting. Really? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that your wife? Uh, no, he doesn't look like it. <laughs> Good. Um, how are we on time, Hagen? Well, you touched over, no, 10 minutes, so it's not that much. We're over 10 minutes?